वेरी गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एंड हार्टी वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू टू अरो ऑनलाइन क्लासेस डेर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आई विल कंटिन्यू विद द सेम लेसन वॉट आई टॉट यू अर्लियर इन माई प्रीवियस क्लास सो द लेसन इज अ ट्रूली ब्यूटिफुल माइंड एंड दिस वॉज अबाउट a great scientific genius albert einstein in my previous class i taught you that he was gifted very much gifted he was excellent i would say in mathematics and physics so he was a very young smart a strap and dashing young, young man and he decided to continue his study at the university of zurich apart from highly interested in physics and mathematics being a young and a smart man he was also interested in something else rather than his study let us talk about it one by one and i'll try to explain it to you everything clearly but science wasn't the only thing that appealed to the dashing young man with the walrus mustache he also felt a special interest in a fellow student mileva marik underline it whom he found to be a clever creature means very intelligent this young serb serb means one who belongs to serbia serbia is the name of a country in europe this young serb had come to switzerland because the university in zurich was one of the few in europe where women could get degrees einstein saw in her an ally against the philistines those people in his family and at the university with whom he was constantly at odds the couple fell in love later survive in which they put their affection into words mixing science with tenderness root einstein how happy and proud i shall be when we both have brought our work on relativity to a victorious conclusion in 90 at the age of 21 albert einstein was a university graduate and unemployed he worked as a teaching assistant underline it gave private lessons and finally secured a job in 1902 as a technical expert in the patent office in bern bern is in germany while he was supposed to be assessing other people's inventions einstein was actually developing his own ideas in secret he is said to have jokingly called the desk drawer at the work the bureau of theoretical physics underline it one of the famous papers of 1905 was einstein a special theory of relativity underline it according to which time and distance are not absolute underline it indeed to perfectly accurate clocks will not continue to show the same time if they come together again after a journey if one of them has been moving very fast relative to the other from this followed the world's most famous formula which describes the relationship between mass and energy e equal to mc square dear students now at the university of zurich as i said that einstein decided to continue his study he decided to carry on his study at the university of zurich and in the same university he met mileva marik she was his fellow student and she was a very intelligent girl Mileva was very intelligent and ambitious and she also joined the University of Zurich in Switzerland actually since she was a very intelligent student and their interest was the same and actually in her family in Mileva family actually people did not like art and literature so people did not like the music art and literature so the people who did not like the music art and literature are termed as philistines in uh, einstein's family 
uh, his uh, family members also did not like art, literature and music. So actually this was the college, this was the university which conferred, which provided degrees to the women also. So here Mileva had an opportunity to obtain degree at the University of Zurich. So this was a this was convenient for Mileva to continue her studies. I have said right now that she was intelligent and ambitious and this was the place where Einstein came in contact with Mileva Marek. And they started studying together, they started spending too much time uh, with each other and they started getting to know about each other and their friendship, both of them became good friends of each other and their friendship lasted in uh, love affair, both of them fell in love with each other and then thereafter they decided to marry. As I said earlier that, uh, as I said right now that at the age of 21 in 1900, Einstein was a university graduate but he was still unemployed, he was still jobless. So he worked as a trade, as a teaching assistant and he also gave his private lessons and then after, uh, after some days of struggle and a strive, he got a job in 1902, means Einstein got a job in 1902 as a technical expert in the patent office in Bern, means in Germany. Now his work, his job, now he had got a job, he had secured a job of a technical expert in the patent office and now it was a very good job for him. His work was to examine, to assess the people's inventions. He had to assess, he had to give the assessment, he had to examine the inventions made by the different people, the inventions made by the different scientists. Actually, apart from working as a technical expert in the patent office of Bern, he was also developing his own work. He was also developing his own work in secret. So he was also doing his own work in secret. And that is why, jokingly, he used to call the patent office of Bern as the bureau, means office of theoretical physics. So till now we have come to know that at the age of 21, he completed his graduation. And after the completion of his graduation, he was still jobless for some time and then and there in 1902 fortunately this young and dashing man got a job of technical expert in the patent office of Bern and then thereafter he started examining he started assessing the inventions uh, made by the different scientists and apart from the assessment of the people of uh, the assessment of the inventions of other people he also uh, he, he was also doing his own work on the theoretical physics. That is why he called the patent office of Bern as the Bureau of Theoretical Physics. Now this was a time uh, for which he is well known and the whole world knows for his mathematical formula uh, in theory of relativity. It is his great contribution, a specific theory of relativity that was the famous papers of 1905 and he gave a mathematical formula to the world and that was E equal to MC square where E stands for where E stands for energy, M stands for mass and C stands for the speed of the light in a vacuum about 3 lakh per second. So this was the mathematical formula he gave this to the world. So this was his greatest contribution. While Einstein was solving the most difficult problems in physics, he was really working very hard. He was still working very hard for physics and his private life was unraveling. Albert had wanted to marry Mileva right after finishing studies, but his mother was against it. Earlier, his mother, Einstein's mother, was against his marriage 
against his marriage with Mileva Marik. So actually she thought Mileva who was three years older than her son was too old for him, underline it. And she was also bothered about Mileva's intelligence. She is a book like you. His mother said Einstein put the wedding off. Wedding off means uh, he put, he postponed the wedding. Actually uh, from this paragraph we have come to know that Mileva's mother, sorry, uh, Einstein's mother was against Einstein's marriage with Mileva Marek because because of two reasons actually she was older than I mean to say Mileva was older than uh, or three years older than Einstein and number two she was more intelligent so because of two reasons that she was very intelligent because of her intelligence and she was also um, uh, older than Einstein in age so mother did not uh, want Einstein to marry Mileva Marek. Actually, when we talk about Einstein, Einstein was interested in getting married Mileva Marek after the completion of his graduation. But uh, uh, he, at that time, he could not go against his, uh, against his mother's wishes. So you know, for the time being, he postponed the wedding. And then both of them got married later on. The pair finally married in January 1903 and had two sons. But a few years later, the marriage faltered. Faltered meant it started weakening. And uh, Mileva, meanwhile, was losing her intellectual ambition and becoming an unhappy housewife. Underline it. After years of constant fighting, the couple finally divorced in 1919. Einstein married his cousin Elsa the same year. It's very interesting fact. Actually, now, for the time being, Einstein postponed his wedding, postponed his married marriage with Mileva Marek. Mother was against his marriage with Mileva. Number two, but finally they got married in the year 1903. In the beginning, everything went well. In the beginning, everything was good. But after some time, actually, because he was not in a position, Einstein was not in a position to uh, spend quality time with the, uh, with his wife Mileva Mary. Both of them had two sons, and he was not devoting time to he was not giving time to Mileva, uh, as he was very much busy in his uh, specific paper theory of relativity. He was working really very hard for physics. So because of this, because of being too busy with his work. Uh, his married life, his married life started weakening. His marriage life started uh, uh, started becoming weak. Uh, his marriage life was on the brink of a breach, I would say. So it wasn't happy at all, and they, uh, it wasn't peaceful. Now it wasn't happy. Now actually, both of them, both the couples started fighting with each other and due to continuous fighting ultimately both of them i mean uh, einstein and mileva marik got divorced in the 1919 and on the same year uh, it was einstein who married his cousin elsa so this is what i taught you now Einstein's new personal chapter coincided with his rise to world fair. In 1915, he had published his general theory of relativity. In 1915, he published his general theory of relativity. And now, means Elsa was in his life and Mileva Marek was out of his life. And it was a concept, it was a coincidence, I would say, that in the same year when he got married, what happened? That in 1915, he had published his general theory of relativity, which provided a new meaning, new interpretation of gravity. An eclipse of the sun in 1919 brought proof that it was accurate. Means in 1919, he got divorced from Mileva Marek and he got married his cousin, Elsa and in 1919 and in the same year 
a solar eclipse proved the fact that whatever he said earlier about the general theory of relativity he proved e equal to mc square it was proved right so it was a very happy time for both of them for the entire world and he gave a new interpretation to the law of gravity gravitational force he gave a new meaning to the law of gravity in the same year and this was universally accepted by the world accepted the theory i mean the general theory of relativity and the world accepted the theory he mathematical formula e equal to mc square einstein had correctly calculated in advance the extent to which the light from fixed stars would be deflected through the sun's gravitational field the newspapers proclaimed his work as a scientific revolution and now the newspapers declared his work as a scientific revolution when he gave the theory gave a meaning to the gravity when he gave the theo general theory of relativity when he gave e equal to mc square this was a proof that whatever einstein provided to the world was absolutely correct and now he got name and fame in the world so he was declared as scientific revolution the his name his work his achievements were uh, his name his fame achievements his great work appeared in the newspapers and the, he came in limelight because of his theory of relativity einstein received the nobel prize for physics in 1921 underline it and he got i mean uh, einstein got the nobel prize uh, for physics in the year 1921 and he was showered with honors and in and invitations from all over the world and lauded by the press lauded means praised prasansa karna and now he was on he was he was showered upon with he was gifted with so many awards and honors throughout the world he got invitations from the different universities and colleges uh, to come and to deliver his lectures so till now einstein became a world scientist till now he became a scientific genius the world accepted him as a scientific genius when the nazis came to power in germany in 1933 einstein emigrated emigrate means to leave one's country and to settle in some other country permanently is called emigration means when you leave your country and you settle in some other country that is called emigration so when the nazis nazi party was set up under the leadership of the dictator adolf hitler and what happened when the nazis came to power in germany in 1933 einstein emigrated to the united states 5 years later the discovery of nuclear fission in berlin had american physicists is in an uproar many of them had fled from fascism just as einstein had and now they were afraid the nazis could build and use an atomic bomb actually hitler was a dictator and he was from germany einstein was from germany so just because of the exploitation and oppressive rule cruel rule of nazis under the leadership of hitler most of the scientists got scared of and they left germany and they settled in united states of america and einstein did the same he also left germany he was from germany he left germany just because of the nazi party just because of adolf hitler and he settled in usa and actually the scientists were afraid that the german scientists were developing nuclear fission they were they were developing uh, nuclear atomic bomb so most of the scientists were scared of it and they did not want the rule of fascism they did not want want any dictatorship in germany 
so the scientists needed some favorable atmosphere some conducive atmosphere and the atmosphere was not right it was not favorable for the scientists in germany because of the oppressive and cruel rule of the nazi party under the leadership of adolf hitler so actually what happened that the scientists were afraid that nazi would build some atomic bomb at the urging of a colleague einstein wrote a letter to the american president franklin d roosevelt on 22 august 1939 in which he warned a single bomb of this type exploded in a port might very well destroy the whole port together with some of the surrounding territory his words did not fail to have an effect the americans developed the atomic bomb in a secret project of their own and dropped it on the japanese cities of hiroshima and nagasaki in august 1945 on the request urging means request on the request of one of his colleagues einstein wrote a letter to the american president franklin d roosevelt those days franklin d d roosevelt was the president of america so he wrote a letter einstein now einstein was in america and he wrote a letter to uh, franklin roosevelt and he warned he warned franklin roosevelt about the destruction caused by an atom bomb he wrote a letter to the president roosevelt and warned him that this bomb is very explosive very destructive if this bomb is dropped at a port not only that port will be destroyed but the surrounding areas will also be destroyed will also be damaged means einstein gave a clear cut warning to president roosevelt that if they try to if the scientists try to make an atom bomb this is not good for humanity this is not good for the people of the world he made him aware means einstein made roosevelt aware about the extent of the level of destruction caused by atom bomb but uh, roosevelt listened to him but he listened to him a very little what happened it had a very little effect means uh, roosevelt had a very i mean einstein had einstein's words einstein's letter had a very little effect some effect on uh, the president roosevelt and as as a result of which what happened that the american scientist started developing atom bomb secretly not openly they started developing atom bomb very secretly that nobody knew that american scientists are developing atom bomb but the whole world came to know about the destruction of this atom bomb when america dropped this uh, disastrous this destructive atom bomb on the two cities of japan they were nagasaki and hiroshima uh, in 1945 so the two cities of japan were destroyed by the uh, by the atom bomb of uh, america america dropped atom bomb on 6 august and 9 august uh, in the year 1945 on these two cities of japan and this was a mass destruction the dropping of atom bomb brought a mass destruction to the people in japan so this was this this was the this was the level or this was the extent of destruction caused by uh, america on japan when the atom bomb was dropped on the two cities of america uh, on the two cities of japan so actually uh, einstein did not know about the secret development of atom bombs when einstein came to know about it actually he was shattered einstein was completely shattered he was broken he was shaken he was he he was badly hurt because he never wanted that the scientists should develop such an atom bomb which is the enemy of uh, which is the enemy of humanity 
this is this shows that he was a great worshipper of humanity this shows that he was a well wisher of humanity this shows that he always advocated he always favored democracy and world peace he believed in world peace he be he believed in democracy he never believed in dictatorship or he never believed in the wrong use of uh, wrong use of the atom bomb or he never believed he was totally against the destructive use of science and this was the destructive use of science the making of atom bomb and dropping of atom bomb on hiroshima and nagasaki was uh, was an example of destructive use of science for which he was totally against means einstein was totally against as i have said that he was badly hurt he was shattered and shaken when he came to know he he was a great he was a he was a great well wisher of mankind he always favored the peaceful life of mankind and he thought about the people of the world he thought about one and all so he was against it and he also he he also gave back his medals and honors to so many universities and to the government that he did not need all these things einstein was deeply shaken now einstein was deeply shaken by the extent of the destruction underline it this time he wrote a public missive missive means letter long letter missive to the united nations in it he proposed the formation of a world government unlike the letter to roosevelt this one made no impact but over the next decade decade means a term of 10 years oh, but over the next decade einstein got ever more involved in politics agitating for an end to the arms build up and using his popularity to campaign for peace and democracy underline it when einstein died in 1955 at the age of 76 he was celebrated as a visionary and a world citizen underline it as much as a scientific genius as i said right now that he was totally completely shattered and shaken by the extent of destruction caused to the two cities of japan and so many people were killed so many people lost their lives thousands and thousands of people lost their lives and their houses everything their life story was completely over this made him shattered this made him perplexed he was against it he was against the destruction uh, on such a mass level then he wrote a letter to the united states united nations united he wrote a letter to united nations and he proposed to the formation of the world government for bringing peace in the world but though he tried his level best to bring peace and unity among the countries of the world but even the united nations did not pay any attention to his letter and then what happened that actually for 10 years for a term of 10 years einstein involved himself in politics but he came he joined politics listen einstein joined politics for humanity he joined politics for bringing democracy for propagating and advocating for supporting peace he wanted world peace he wanted democracy he wanted that the people should be given free right to enjoy their life he wanted that everything should be done for the sake of the people he wanted that the government should do everything for the social and economic justice of the people and he wanted that there should be peace in the world because he believed in the concept of humanity he was against the misuse of atom bomb he was against the misuse of such a uh, this uh, he was against the misuse of science i would say he never favored it he favored democracy he favored humanity he favored world peace so this shows that his mind was beautiful his heart was beautiful because he thought about humanity 
He wanted world peace for one and all. He wanted prosperity for one and all. He he wanted progress for one and all and he was totally against the dropping of atom bomb. So this made him all these qualities made him made his mind really a truly beautiful mind and he was he was aware as to what would happen in future and he had already warned Mr. Roosevelt, he had already written a letter to the United States, but United States did not, uh, United Nations, I would say, United Nations did not, uh, did not uh, abide by his request, did not uh, comply with his request. As a result, the whole world suffered. And he was regarded as a great visionary. He had a vision, he had a vision that if, the people do not uh, stop making the wrong use of science. If the people do not uh, stop the misuse of science, the world will have to suffer a lot and the entire humanity will suffer a lot. Mankind will suffer a lot. So he was regarded as a world citizen because he thought for the world. He thought for peace. He was concerned about the world peace. He was concerned about the life of the people. And he was not concerned only about the life of Germ uh, of the life of the people of Germany, or he was not only concerned about the life of the people of America. He was concerned about the life of the people of the world. So he was a world citizen. He was regarded as world citizen. And unfortunately, Einstein died in the year 1955. So here comes the end of this lesson. We have studied a lot about this scientific genius Albert Einstein who worked for humanity, who lived for humanity and who died for humanity. A big salute to such a great scientist of the world. Such a scientist is beyond the geographical boundaries and limitations. Such a scientist who really worked for humanity will always remain in our hearts. He will, we shall always remember the greatest contribution of such a scientist forever. And we shall keep such a great scientist in our, our heart. Such a great scientist will never be forgotten by us. Thank a big salute to such a great scientist of the 20, 20th century, I would say. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Thank you very much students. So till then, be blessed, keep learning, keep practicing, work hard and if you have any query, feel free to ask me. Thank you very much. That's all.